Hey guys, I just learned about a dog named Chaser. Chaser's a border collie who has a vocabulary of more than a thousand words. That's like the same as a four-year-old child. But what makes Chaser even more special is that he can separate nouns from verbs. Take lips, take lips. Do it, girl, do it. Good girl, good girl. Paul in, Paul in, Paul in, Chaser. Good girl, good girl. Nose, ABC. Who's ABC? Good girl, good girl. Come here. This is Oliver. Oliver, you think you're smarter than Chaser? What do you say? What do you say? Huh? Oh! Yeah. Let's go find out. Come on. Get your ball. Where's your ball? Get your bone. Where's your bone? Nope. That's your ball. Where's your bone? Bone. Bone. Nope. Find your bone. Where's your bone? Okay, so maybe Oliver's not that good at this particular test, but the fact that we even try to communicate with dogs and that they communicate back with us means that the human-dog relationship is truly something special. Who's your first boy? Who's your best boy? I have been known to talk to dogs a little. Oh, this is a good boy. Who's your best boy? Or a lot. Who's the smartest doggy in the world? It's hard to know if they're responding to the words or just the emotion in my voice or the fact that I sound ridiculous. But one recent study suggests that it's both, or all three. Researchers at the University of Sussex played sounds out of speakers on both sides of a dog. When dogs heard commands stripped of their emotional context, they turned their head to the right, suggesting that they process verbal meaning in their left hemisphere. And when they heard the emotional sounds in the voice but the words were jumbled, they turn to the left, suggesting that they process emotional sounds on the right. These experiments show that dogs can definitely separate the meaning of words from the emotions attached, but how much information do they take from each? When I ask my dogs, you wanna go for a walk? They aren't processing the real meaning of that sentence the way that we do, like, hmm, uh, let me see, do I wanna go for a walk right now, or get some exercise? Maybe I'm not feeling it today. I'm a dog, like, what does it even mean to want something? As good as dogs are with words, in many of our interactions, there's probably a good amount of clever Hans at play. In the early 1900s, a horse named Hans was said to be able to solve simple math problems by tapping his hoof to represent numbers. Two plus three. Smart horse. It was later found though that Hans couldn't do math at all. He was just responding to tiny cues from his handlers. Maybe their facial expressions would tense as he got close to the right answer, or they would exhale when he tapped the right number. Clever Hans demonstrates that while we might think of language as something we experience mainly through our ears, we communicate meaning using more than just sound frequencies. In his book, The Expression of the Emotions in Man and Animals, Charles Darwin argued that the way we outwardly express and interpret emotions evolved from animals, and that our ability to recognize fear, happiness, and sadness, even across species, is universal and innate. It's something that we're born with. Today, scientists are still debating whether Darwin was right, but recent research suggests that we do share one special bit of emotional intuition with our canine companions. Dogs are the only non-primate animals that seek out eye contact with humans. Their wolf ancestors, even tame ones, although they're close enough to genetically interbreed with dogs, won't look us in the eye, which is why you can never, ever trust a wolf. How am I doing? When reading emotions in other people, we tend to look disproportionately and unconsciously to the right side of their face. The dogs share this so-called left gaze bias, but only when looking at human faces, not when they look at other dogs. It seems like they genuinely want to understand what we're telling them and what it means. And we seem to understand them too, or at least we think that we do. Researchers in Hungary tested people's ability to interpret the meaning of recorded dog barks and found that many people really can speak dog. What do you think this bark means? Okay, that dog's angry, that's pretty easy. But what about this one? Do you wanna go for a walk? Okay, that dog wants to go for a walk. One more.
I have no idea what that means. If you think about it, this dog-human language connection makes a lot of sense. We've co-evolved with these creatures for the past 10,000 years or so. We've molded them from wolves into puppies with our hands and our brains and our voices. And even if we don't always understand each other, well, they're always there to listen. And that's the real meaning of a best friend. Is it, buddy? Go push. Wait a second. Sorry. Hello? Um, yeah, sure. It's for you. Hello, this is Oliver. Hello, this is Dog. Oh, hey Luna. Have you seen Vanessa? She's been out for hours. I miss her. Ruh roh. Uh, well, thanks Luna. If you want to find out more about dog behavior, head on over to Braincraft and find out if they really miss us when we're gone. Stay curious. Good boy. Oh, and special thanks to Oliver. <laughs>